Hi, everyone, and welcome to Mashable Reads, Mashable Social Book Club, where we can bring together members of the Mashable community with new authors to talk about the best of uh, new literature. Today, we're joined by Emma Straub, author of The Vacationers. Um, my name is Nora Grenfell. I'm on the Mashable community team, and I want to say thank you to Emma for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I love it. It's like the, an internet book club. What could be better? That's exactly how we feel. I'm glad you get it. Um, all right. Uh, if anyone has any questions for Emma during the Hangout, you can uh, tweet them at us using the hashtag MashReads, or you can leave them in the Q&A app in the Google Hangout itself. Um, I have a question to start things off. Um, well, <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, Emma, uh, for those who haven't read your book who are tuning in, um, you know, wh what would you tell them to get them to read it? Um, well, I think it all depends. You know, I, I come from a book selling background, and so I'm willing to say anything it takes to, to whoever it is. Like, this weekend, um, we were out in Montauk at a brewery, and I was presented with, like, a lot of frat boys. And I told all the fat boys that the book was just about food and sex because I thought that would make them buy it. Um, so if you're a frat boy, then the book is just about food and sex. There's nothing else in it. You're going to love it, and so are your bros. Um, but I, I would say to most people, I would say it's a story about a family in crisis. It's a portrait of a marriage. It's a book about siblings and lovers and friends and... Um, how we try to show the best sides of ourselves to those we love, but it doesn't always work. And the truth comes out eventually. <laughs> I, having read the book, I would say that's definitely an accurate description, as is the food and sex description for all the bros that are listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so I, this was your second full-length novel. Um, so how was the process of writing this different uh, than your first novel, Laura Lamont's Life in Pictures? The process was extremely different. Um, so my, my first novel, Laura Lamont's Life in Pictures, was historical and started in 1920 and ended in 1980 and covered all this time. And it was about the Hollywood studio system, and so I had to do a lot of research. Um, so that was hard. Um, I had to spend a lot of time in the library, which I loved. Um, I went to the Special Collections Library in Los Angeles. Uh, which was great, but, you know, it, it, it was a, a different way for me to work. Um, I'd never done that sort of research before. And then um, I came home from my book tour for Laura Lamont uh, and found out that I was pregnant, which was very exciting news, um, but it meant that I was suddenly working against two different deadlines because my new book was due in September and the baby was due in August. And so I really had to get moving. <laughs> um, and so I, I wrote I wrote the vacationers much more quickly than I wrote Laurel Lamont, um, which which was nice. I think I think it suited the project. You know, the the whole book takes place over the course of two weeks, and so it feels sort of fast. And you know, the book is a lot about pacing and um, movement. So so I think it it worked well that I was under the gun in multiple ways. Oh, yeah. Um, so you said you had a lot to do a lot of um, research for your first book, and this is actually a question I was going to ask you later on, but it kind of ties into it. Um, you know, clearly The Vacationers takes place um, not exactly in New York City, but you can sort of feel the presence of New York City throughout um, the whole novel. And I know, for me, it resonated quite personally, actually, because I uh, went to high school in New York City, and reading it, uh, you know, about, like, the summer house parties and just that feeling of being stuck in the city but happy about it, it, it really resonated with me. So I was wondering, like, was any part of that, like, autobiographical? Did you grow up in New York City? Was there less research? Yeah, um, yes. I mean, I, the, though this family is not my family, I did grow up in New York City. The, the posts, the family in the book, live on 75th Street. I grew up on 85th Street, so <laughs> there are certain um, biographical details that are, that are mine as well, but, uh, you know, the, the book really is totally 100% fictional, but, um, but yeah, I mean, of course, I think whenever you write anything, there are little bits and pieces of you that slip in there, and so, um, yeah, my feelings about New York City are <laughs> probably come across. Yeah. I, mean, well, I, I haven't left, so I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, so few of us do. Um, 
so I'd love to turn it over to MJ at this point. I know um, MJ's a member of the MASH Reads team here at Mashable, and I know he has a question for you. So MJ, take it away. So um, this book seems to be the book of the summer in that like every book list I've read um, has the vacationers included. Um, I've seen so many people reading it on the subway here in New York. Um, so I was wondering if you could talk about what it's like as an author to have such a big blockbuster. Um, yeah. Bless your heart, MJ. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not on the subway enough, I guess. I've never seen anybody reading it in public. Um, I read it on the subway, I promise. Oh, my God. Which, what line are you on? What, li what subways do you take? Uh, I take the... One down to the two or three, and then the two or three down to the N or the R. So a lot okay, of no, no, you're you're covering a few different lines there. Mm -hmm. I see. Maybe, that, maybe I'm just like too much on my own frequency. <laughs> um, it feels wonderful. It feels wonderful that people are reading this book. Um, I sort of can't quite believe it. Like it seems slightly implausible. Um. And wonderful, and wonderful. You know, my publisher has done such a beautiful job. Um, I mean, starting with the cover, which you can see behind me here, um, it's so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous, and I think that it just looks like a book you want to just dive right into. Um, and yeah, I mean, so I don't know. You know, it's I can't believe it, and I'm grateful. And to any of you who have bought my book. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's really, it's really crazy, 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 crazy. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I think I would also agree that it's definitely the hit of the summer, and um, it's easy to see why, having read it. Um, so I see also joining us is um, Betty. Um, <laughs> hi, Betty, a lifestyle writer and blogger from New Jersey. Um, she snuck right in there, and I'm really happy we're able to uh, to make this hangout work. Um, so I know you have a question for um, Emma too. Uh, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Yes. Hi, Emma. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. Um, I do blog for smart and stylish moms, and I cannot tell you how well this book review um, was received on my blog, my friend Betty says. Um, and everywhere, Instagram, the, the, the cover is beautiful and everybody's photographing. Mm -hmm. But I want to know, I fell in love with your character Sylvia. Mm -hmm. I, and I have to tell you, I read another book after your book. Oh. And, <laughs> and I felt like it was Sylvia's story. Like, do you, do you, would you ever consider taking a character from your book, The Vacationers, and expanding on just one character's life, like Sylvia? Yeah, I would. I mean, and I, I've thought a lot about Sylvia. I've been, I've been writing about these characters for a long time, and, um, and I've written, actually, a lot of their backstory. So mm -hmm. I've written a lot about sort of earlier, earlier periods in Jim and Franny's marriage, and... Um, like there, there's a story in my short story collection, Other People We Married, called Pearls, that's about Franny as a teenager, um, which I think is sort of interesting to think about, like, in comparison, you know, Franny as a teenager in comparison um, with Sylvia as a teenager with her daughter. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I will eventually write a, a book about Sylvia. Um, not yet. I'm, you're smiling. Um, not, not, not yet. Probably, I think I need to sort of go have fun with some other imaginary people first. But, um, but yeah, eventually, I think so. Just because I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about what happens to her. You know, I don't, I don't know what happens to her. Um, it's not like I'm sitting here being like, oh my god, I'm not going to tell you what happens to Sylvia when she's 25. You know, I, I'm genuinely curious. So, we'll see. Yeah, stay tuned. All right, well, that's a, a tantalizing answer, to be sure. Um, mm -hmm. So shifting away from a moment uh, from a discussion of the book and its rich plot and its many characters, um, I'm wondering, you know, a lot of people, um, I think, look to you as an inspiration, as an author who was definitely able to engage with a conver uh, in a conversation with, um, you know, the literary community and also her fans on social media. And, you know, you mentioned that you were, like, out in Montauk telling bros about reading your book. Like, that's not a step that, that every author thinks to take. Um, so do you have any advice that you would 
offer new writers or even um, writers that are perhaps new to the publishing world, even if they've been writing for a while? Um, well, in terms of that stuff, I think it totally, totally depends. You know, I think um, I have, of course, lots and lots and lots of friends who are writers, and some of them really enjoy engaging with people on social media and doing events and doing stuff like this, um, which I think is terrific fun. But some some of my friends just can't do it at all and just don't want, they want to pretend that it's like 1963 and the internet does not exist. Um, and that's fine, I think, because, you, I mean, it's, you can't fake this stuff, really. You know, I, I do, um, People come up to me with sort of a surprising frequency <laughs> these days um, in public. Like people who have read my my books or essays or stories of mine will come up to me in public, and I think it's because it's not because I'm so famous, um, which I'm certainly not. It's just it's because I I think I present such like an approachable face to the universe that people just don't feel intimidated by me. This was a major problem for me in high school when, like, all I wanted to do was to really, really intimidate people, and it never worked. Um, I've never intimidated anybody in my life, unfortunately. <laughs> like, if you're intimidated by me, call me, and, like, I will send you a present. But it's really, it, I think that, you know, the Internet is, is a beautiful tool um, for however you want to use it. If you want to be as, like, goofy and ridiculous as I am, great. Um, or if you want to sort of... <laughs> have more boundaries. That's good too. Um, so I, I, that's a very long-winded answer. Um, I think in terms of advice, um, I would say figure out what your comfort level is um, and stay there. You know, like don't. I, I even though I do think that you know social media stuff um, is has been really helpful for me in in my career. I don't think. I don't think it's true for everyone because I don't think everyone um, enjoys it. So I think you have to actually enjoy it in order to get something out of it. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And I think that's something here at MASH Reads that we find as well. Um, you know, we want to give people around the world the chance to interact with authors in, you know, a sort of... Um, intimate level they never would have been able to pre-internet by you know having these discussions via Google Hangout um, but then we also want to sort of honor the tried and true tradition of book clubs by you know getting together in our office to just talk face to face and you know enjoy some wine and cheese um, yeah. so I think that you know there's no reason why um, one one being the internet has to supplant sort of the physical experience right um, yeah, okay. So uh, I'm going to throw it back to MJ. MJ, uh, did you have another question for Emma? Oh, I can't hear him. Uh-oh. Hold on, MJ. Uh-oh. MJ. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to ask MJ this question for him. Oh, wait. Are you back? Am I back? You're back. Perfect. He's here. <laughs> So I had a um, follow-up question about social media um, and writers. Um, uh, so what are your favorite social networks for, for the literary community? I'm sort of embarrassed to admit that I like them all. Um, I think uh, Twitter, Twitter is, is my favorite, I think. Be just I don't know why. It's just sort of the easiest for me to follow. Um, Twitter is my favorite, um, but I also really like Tumblr. I also, you know, am on Facebook just like everybody else. Um, I'm on Instagram. I mean, I'm I I'm on. If they've got it, I'm on it basically. Um, yeah, I don't know. Twitter is my favorite just because it 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 moves so quickly and um, it's. You know, where Tumblr, I, I get sort of sidetracked, like watching like you know little videos of like puppies, um, <laughs> which I really enjoy and I need in my life certainly. Um, but Twitter for me, I, I guess it's just like you know the people I follow. It's it's it seems like a more concentrated conversation. Um, yeah. And then I also had a question about the book too. 
Um, one of my favorite characters in The Vacationers was Carmen, um, the the girlfriend of one of the, the post um, children. Um, and I felt like she kind of got a bad rep in the book. They're talking about how, how much older she is, and they make one of her clothes. Um, but in a lot of ways, she's the most level-headed one. So I was wondering yeah. if you could talk a little bit more about that character and why she's the butt of some of the jokes and why she is so contentious. Yeah, sure. Well, so, I, I mean, I don't know how your family works, MJ, but I, I think most families um, have a scapegoat, you know, um, in part because it makes things easier. You know, if you have nothing to say to your dad normally, maybe you can sort of join forces and talk about how, like, horrible your sister's boyfriend is or whatever. You know, it's, I think that um, talking shit brings people together. And so I, I, I think with Carmen, my, my sort of goal was to present her in such a way that at the, at the beginning, you're really just seeing her through the family's eyes. Um, and then by the end, I've sort of given her, a, hopefully I've given her a chance to speak a little bit. And so you understand a little bit more about what, what it's like to be that person, you know, to be the one who everyone's sort of ganging, ganging up on, um, when really, really it's just that they don't understand her and they, they haven't really been given um, the opportunity to get to know her. Like, I would say it's, it's really, you know, it's not, it's not Carmen's fault in the book. It's, it's Bobby's fault, right? It's her boyfriend's fault. Um, that the family doesn't like her because instead of saying, "Guys, this is my girlfriend. Isn't she terrific? I just love her." He sort of hides her and like he treats her badly, and so of course the rest of the family treats her badly. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad you liked her. I liked her too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I was a fan of Carmen as well. Um, I'm noticing we're getting close to the end of our time for the hangout. Uh, so does anyone else have a question that they like to add or a comment? or a joke, sort of whatever. Anyone have anything more to say? I want a joke. <laughs> that was way too much pressure for me to put on this situation. I retract well, that statement. You know, I, I've been, um, I don't know if you guys listen to the Dinner Party Download, the podcast, but I hope this is in the room. She's been there with me a few times. So they, it's this really great podcast, but they always ask me to come with jokes, and I don't know any jokes, so whenever I go in there, I like post on Facebook and on Twitter. I'm like, somebody give me a joke, please. <laughs> I don't know any jokes. Um, I would tell one now, but I can't even remember them. Oh, I remember one. Do you want to hear a joke? I think so. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, no, hold on. Now I just remember the punchline. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> Maybe you can tell us the punch kind, and we can retroactively <laughs> guess the joke. <laughs> um, oh, my god. Oh, yeah. Um, why did the hipster burn his mouth on the pizza? Why? Because he ate it before it was cool, man. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good joke. I just said it was a joke. No, I like that one. Well, I think um, you know the power of the internet to crowdsource jokes for icebreakers uh, is definitely an affirmative note to end this hangout on. Um, so I wanted to say thank you um, to Emma for gracing us with your presence and sharing your insights, and also thank you um, to Betty for joining us um, from across the river. Uh, we're here in New York City. Uh, and thank you to everyone who tuned in and who read The Vacationers with us this month. Um, it was a lot of fun for us. I'm sure it was a lot of fun for you as well. Um, we'll be announcing our next pick soon, and we hope that you can join us again. Uh, thanks one more time, Emma. This was so much fun. Yay, thank you for having me. Yay, Mashable. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Bye, everyone.